Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this is a little later than I promised, and I apologize for that. Should we just say that grim plus dodgy food equals... Yeah, okay, that might be too much information. <laughs> My apologies. Should we just move on with this? So today we are going to look at the toggle anchor function within LVUI. Now this little Volpira, we are going to say goodbye for now. We're going to instead join my level one rogue stabby man who I've never used, never played. But he's going to help us out right now. So this screen can be a little bit information overload. You've got your UI kind of the way you like it. You hit that, hit that button. And all of a sudden, it just explodes with boxes that weren't there before. They've just appeared out of nowhere, and it can be a little overwhelming. It's hard to even know where to start. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look. We're going to go clockwise, and we're going to look at the each area. We're going to break it down into areas, and we're going to look at what generally applies within that area. What's there? What do we need to be aware of? What do we just kind of need to leave to do its own devices? Whatever. So we're going to start top and center. And the very top is situational alerts or information. An example would be heroic visions. The default sanity bar appears at the top. Also text alerts, things like you've leveled up or your pet has reached level. Blah, 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 blah. That's where it appears. Also, you will know that your loot, the anchor point for the loot from, let's say, raid bosses or dungeons, when it appears scrolling down your screen, that's where it comes from. There's the anchor point. You can see here, there will be a few things that are moved, maybe different to your one. Like for one, my target cast bar is in this area. That is purely a personal preference. Let's move on. Section 2, the very center of our screen, is generally clear. Shock horror! That'll be so we can actually see our character and avoid, well, try to avoid standing in fire and other shenanigans that uh, will potentially kill us. But that's not to say there are not some unique situations when you're going to need a button popping up or just something that Blizzard don't want you to miss. This is the place they're going to put it. So things Blizzard really don't want you to miss are loss of control buttons, boss ability buttons, zone buttons, generally buttons that will just appear. A good example of this would probably be the Nazoth sanity button. You know, you got to click it and you activate your cloak and it makes you regain your sanity. Or, if you remember Wallers of Drenor, whenever you went into a new zone and you had done the little quest line, and you'd gain a new, new garrison ability. So you'd have the Artillery Barrage or the Arcane Orb thing, if I remember correctly. Or you'd have the soldiers that would come and join you. But, for me, I can't stand. I cannot stand these boxes being in the middle. You can just leave them. It's fine. They generally just appear around your character. I tend to, as you can see on my screen, just move them, pull them to the side, because it's just sod's thought. I'm just something is going to happen. The button's going to pop up, and I'm going to die. That's just me. So I tend to just move them around a little bit. Moving on to section three. Now this is the area around your mini map. Three big things are going to happen here: your player buffs, your player debuffs, and of course the mini map itself. Player buffs, as we all know, are the positive effects. Things that are currently affecting your player. A good example of that would currently be the Wisdom XP buff. The debuffs, but yeah, they're basically the opposite effect. Things that are hampering or harming your character. Other thing to note, if you've read a notification pop up that Johnny is online again after leaving at the very start of BFA, or Ice Pick is swapping onto his 20 characters to check mail, and you keep getting that bling blong, bling blong, bling blong, and a notification appearing underneath your map. That is your Battlefront Battle Net notification, and that can be moved here. Onwards to section four. Now this area doesn't actually have much in. Reason for that? Because that's where your quests are. Yeah, generally because your quests sit here, Blizzard don't want anything appearing or overlapping on top of that. So it tends to be quite a clear area. The only time that that's not the case is when you're not likely to have that many quests come up and that is when you're in the arena or if you are inside dungeons. Yeah, this is where you're going to get the arena frames or the boss frames. Now, I will say I move mine, you'll actually notice mine are slightly more to the center. I play on a 32 inch monitor, so because I'm lazy, I don't want to move my head to the side of the screen. So I just pull these things a little bit tighter into the middle of the frame so I can actually see them. Again, like I'm going to say with pretty much 
everything here, it's all optional. It's all what works for you. So you may not need to do that. Now you can also see here that I've moved my talking heads into this area. That's just to move it somewhere out of the way up to you. It doesn't pop off very regularly. Um, apart from if you're in Zordazar and you get that quest going, the merchants are really getting annoyed by some brontosaurus that keeps doing something. Or children are messing with scrolls. That can get annoying. Oh, the Tortolan. God damn you. I will not miss you in Shadowlands unless you're being eaten in the moor. Anyway, let's not go that dark. Section 5, considered by many to be the most important section, consisting of player frames, target frames, focus frame, action bars, and more. Likely this is where you're going to be spending most of your time when it comes to changing things within LVUI and within the anchor tool. So the main goal here is to help you play the best you can play. If you want to use weak auras to tell me when, then you can hide your bars and not show them at all. If you want to click rather than use key bindings, then set your buttons, change these so that and position them so that they can most benefit you. Also, going forward, Blizzard want to bring in controller support direct to WoW. We could change a UI how our buttons are laid out based around this controller future. I know, I, d I can't imagine playing WoW on a controller, but I'm going to do it for shits and giggles. Why not? Let's level a character and do some dungeons with it. But that's another story. So at the end of this, I will show you a couple of examples of different UIs, just very quickly, that I've made up. So you can kind of see, you can get an idea of how we can, just by changing a few simple things, really drastically alter how our UI can look. To section six. I've heard rumors that World of Warcraft is, in fact, an MMO. So if, yes, if you end up finding yourselves joining or being joined by other players, then this is the area that is probably going to affect you. Yeah, now I tend to move my party frames a little nearer to the center, again, because of the size of my monitor. I like to be able to see the group if I need to throw a combat res out because I'm on my lock. Then it's good to have that there. But this is where your 40 man raid legacy frames are. Your raid frames are going to be your main assist, main tank. All of that stuff is in this area. So I will say if you're playing on a healer. And this will be something that I'll show you at the very end of this video. I tend to move all of those bars into section 5. The one we were just looking at. Which is actually where my buttons would normally be. Because... I use mouse over macros for healing, so having those right in the middle of my screen, right in my eye line, is super important. Yes, we will be covering mouse over macros in a later video. Section 7, last, but by no means least, this is kind of the miscellaneous area containing things that don't really fit in anywhere else. So, vehicle seating frame is here. Ever wanted to kick people off of your yak? This is where you get the opportunity to do that. If you have already replied to a ticket from Blizzard, this is generally where it will appear. Also, the in-game voice overlay is shown here. So, you know when you enter that dungeon and you're in a random group, it joins party chat, and you've got a kid who's being told they have to clean their room right in the middle of your, you know, clutch time M plus run. Now you can see exactly who it is. And we're almost at the end now. We have some honorable mentions that we haven't covered First up, we have the two chat windows, the left covering general chat and the right covering trade. Move these as you want, but if you really don't want to see them, I would say you're better off just using the small arrows in the corner, as you can see here, and just hiding them all together. I will give you some examples later on of well, moving them about, moving them to areas where you might not necessarily care where they are, and then just hiding them. That's fine, but keep them somewhere on your screen. They're just too, too helpful not to uh, not to have them. And you'll regret it later trying to get them back. They're a nightmare. Next up, we have the bag and bank toggles. If you've ever opened your bag and you thought, oh, it's annoying. This could be in a far more user-friendly place. This is the anchor. So from this point, that's where your bags open from. Now, I will say there are a lot of bag add-ons. Audi is one that springs to mind. They will actually override this. So it doesn't matter where you put this. Audi bags will actually have their own anchor. Just be aware of that. It's the same with a lot of different things that uh, sometimes will override the placement of various things in LV. But if you're just using the default LV, then yeah, move these about and they will position in a bit more friendly place where your bags are going to go. Whew. Last, last of all, before we move on to some actual practical examples of this, is the tooltip. 
If you're not a big fan of having your tooltip actually locked to your cursor, you can use the toolbar anchor, which you can see here. Move that about wherever you want, and that is where your toolbars will, or well, that's where your tooltips will appear. So, before we get on to some UIs that I've just built, just to give you some random examples of what they can look like, let's get into an actual example. Practical use of how the anchor tool works. So we've gone through the install process, we're back on our Volpiran, but our micro bar is still not showing. So first, let's switch that on. Now, it's not a great location, it's dumped it up there, that doesn't really help us. So let's go down here, let's click our toggle anchor. We're going to find our macro bar, we know it's up the top here, and we're simply just going to drag it to a location that suits us. If you find that the bar is still just in need of a little nudge, little just lining up perfectly if you want to just make sure it's right on the grid then you can simply click on it and you will see that the nudge tool appears allowing you to click whatever corresponding direction you need and that will literally just move whichever bar or frame you have selected one pixel in whatever direction now we're going to head out of the anchor and you can see now that our micro bar or what i would call the menu bar is now in the perfect position that we wanted but now let's create another bar. Let's make it a five button vertical. And yeah, that's perfect. Now we're gonna head back into our toggle anchor. And for this, we're gonna change the grid size just a little bit to make it more precise. We're gonna move it roughly to where we want it first of all. Then again, we're just gonna click on it. We're gonna go into nudge mode and we're going to line it up with the grid and sort it. And recently, when it comes down to it, that is all there is to the anchor tool. That is all there is. It's just the tool to line up how you want your UI to look. It's simply the fact that when you first open it, it looks so overwhelming. Because there's so many boxes and so many things that you're just terrified that you're going to move stuff. And you're going to mess it up. Realistically, you're not. There's nothing in the anchor tool that you're going to suddenly break. I will say, if you want, join, you know, invite one of your friends to a party. So it will bring up your party frame. Then you can move that around. That's the best way to do it. I would suggest not taking five minutes to make your UI. As I said before, take your time. The more effort you put into it, the better results are gonna be. But in the last section, I've gone through and I've made just three very simple UIs based on various styles. And so kind of gonna give you an idea of the sort of things you can create going forward. So, minimap style, which is putting the minimap front and center. You'll see this in other uh, MMOs, Final Fantasy has a very similar layout to this. You're also going to see, and this is not the last one I've done it in, I have taken my chat boxes, I've put them over onto the left hand side, and I've separated them out. We can hide them, we can reappear them how we want it to be, but uh, yeah, just drag them out, put them over to the left hand side. Now, onto the Druid Healer. This is one that I actually use. This is my Druid, this is the one that I heal on, this is what I do. LFR, I don't raid at a serious level, but this is this is one that I actually use. So yeah, this is my Rezzle the Druid. And as I say, you can see here that what I've done is I've pulled the sort of the bars from the side, the raid frames and also my party frames, and I've pulled them into the very center. I've moved my action bars out, out to the edges because I want front and center, I want to be able to see who's going to need healing and when. And again, this is using mouse over macros. So I don't need to click any buttons. I literally just hover over, press the button I need to, and heal that individual. Last, but by no means least, and this is quite a drastically different one. But we have, yeah, the controller bar. It's a little crazy. I kind of was going to base it on Guild Wars 2. Didn't turn out that way. I just ended up creating it. It is, by the way, I want to say created around a Xbox controller style. We've got the four buttons for the, I think it's the YBXA and the direction arrow keys. And then you've got the LB and the uh, RB and, of course, the corresponding triggers. Now, those literally, as I said before, have taken a couple of seconds. or took probably about, I'd say, three to five minutes to make. Didn't take very long, but they give you just some ideas. You can really play about, just drag elements all over the place, make the UI that works best for you. I've said it three or four times now. This is what it's about. It's about making something that works for you and improves your gameplay. Who cares what it looks like? 
So long as it works, that is what is important. But I think I've gone long enough now, ladies and gentlemen. Stay safe, have a great day, and I'll catch you all tomorrow. Have a good one.